So my name is Delano Dunn. I am a artist in residence here at APL. I am a painter and a mixed media artist. When I came into the residency, I wanted to sort of get my feet underneath me. Shortly after that started is when things started to happen with COVID. And so I ended up doing a project about appropriation and food traditions and families. My family, we were Creole and gumbo was a huge part of our family. And I had wanted to explore how gumbo had become such a big part of our family and why we as a family were so protective of it. So the way you make gumbo is you start with the Holy Trinity, which is onions, celery, and bell pepper. And that, along with flour and lard, give you the roux, so to speak. You've gotta cook the flour until it turns like this walnut brown, and if you're not careful and you don't constantly mix it, it burns, and your roux's all gone. So the research for those ingredients came with about three conversations I had with my mom and my aunt. They start out normal, and then you hear two people on the phone going, no, 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 you, you're supposed to put this in it. No, 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 there's that. That's supposed to be in it? You don't know what you're talking about. That's supposed to be in it. As a kid, I grew up in the kitchen watching them cook, and so it was really fun to have these conversations with them and hear how they operate and made me kind of homesick. I also consider the making of the gumbo part of the research process. It's the second time I've made gumbo, but this was on a larger scale. It was also being zoomed out into people who wanted to come watch the experience. So I used my mom's recipe during the public program. She called in, she gave people tips about how to do it. She was really amazing during it, honestly. And this small project that was just supposed to be a couple of paintings ended up becoming five paintings about it. In the paintings, you see those ingredients, and then you also see these individuals looking as though they're about to take the recipe itself, take the ingredients, and protecting this recipe are these sort of vicious animals. There's something about the dynamic between the hunter and the hunted that I thought was rather interesting. And the thought was that, you know, to protect ourselves from appropriation, people will go to great lengths to protect what's theirs. And in this case, it's sort of a, visualization of me protecting that recipe. I've had a lot of people, they've had my mom's gumbo and said, what's the recipe? And I've said, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't want to tell you. Having said that, we did do a public program about gumbo and my mom was totally fine with me telling people what the recipe was, which didn't used to be the case when we were younger. She kind of pulled the rug out from underneath me. So the process is layers upon layers. There's about three or four different layers of collaged elements on these particular works. The properties of the silver roofing material are to deflect the sunlight and protect you know, the, the housing. And so I thought, well, that's a very literal way to sort of use this material. I'm just gonna take it and let it operate that way on the canvas. You know, the facilities here are great. It's nice to be in a climate controlled space, particularly when I'm working with the resin. The staff at APL is amazing. They've been great. They provided a space and support and opportunity and funds to produce the project the way I wanted to produce it. It allowed me not to have to cut corners on anything. It was kind of like being able to make whatever the heck I wanted. <laughs>